Hey, what's up? This is Luke from BassGorilla.com. Today we're checking out Pulsator by Sonic Faction. So Pulsator, all the sounds in it come from the Waldorf Pulse Plus, which is an analog synth from back in the day. Now, Pulsator has quite a range of sounds, but a lot of them are very aggressive, very nasty. First thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of control, but it's laid out in a very simple way and a really beautiful interface that we have here. So on the left, there is the master volume. You can change between monophonic and polyphonic. There's a noise level here, detune amount and then glide. And then to the right of that, we have two independent oscillators. So let's see what the uh, synth sounds like right out of the box. Okay, so what we have here is oscillator one. You have the ability to control its volume the uh, pulse width modulation and then tuning. And you can change the shape from saw wave to triangle to pulse. So what I'll do is I'll just bring the level down of oscillator two completely. And I'll bring the noise level down. Okay, so what we'll do is just play around with oscillator one and demonstrate some of the sounds you can get. So. This is just a saw wave. And triangle. And then pulse. And you can change the pulse width. with the uh, being on the extreme left being the beefiest. Okay, so that's oscillator one, and then oscillator two is the same, but we can adjust its volume and pulse width and the waveform independently. So let's see what we can come up with. And you can see that oscillator two is 12 semitones above oscillator one right now. And you can change this to be anything you like. You could even have it be say seven tones, seven semitones above oscillator one. for those kind of chords. Let's bring that back to 12 semitones above. Okay, so the oscillator section is nice and simple, but has some very, very high quality sounds in it. And then to the right of that, we have the X mod section or the cross modulation section. So this is where Pulsator really shines. Uh, we have here in the center a picture of a heart. And right now I'm not doing anything, I'm not using the X mod section at all. Uh, but let me just talk you through this. What we can do is we can control the X mod volume with the outer dial, and I'm just clicking and dragging up. So. And then with the inner dial, we can tune that. So. We can go from being one up all the way up to 16 semitones above. So let me just boost the level of this so that you can hear it more clearly. And in some areas, it really sounds great. So. Listen to that, very powerful. So what I did is I made a very simple um, melody and a beat, and I'm going to play that to you right now. This is what it sounds like with the XMOD volume and XMOD selector brought all the way down to their minimum values. And you can actually reset them by, say if the XMOD level is boosted up to here, I can click on XMOD volume and that will reset it. Same with the XMOD selector, I can click on this button here and that will reset it. So. Let's take a listen to this melody. This is how it sounds with no XMOD being used on it. But if we are to boost the XMOD level all the way up, or almost all the way up, and then if I change this, So there, that's very powerful. 
Let's bring the level down a little bit on that track. Okay, so listen to the melody now. Let's try tuning. Let's try with a different X mod selector. So right now it's seven above, and I'm just going to boost that up to say ten. Let's see what that sounds like. Twelve sounds great. So you can see the power that you can get using the XMOD oscillator. Really great stuff. And what I'm going to do next is walk you through each of the seven tabs that we have to the right. So you'll see, starting with the furthermost left tab, we have filter controls. So obviously we can rein in the frequency. And that sounds great. We can control the resonance, velocity sensitivity, and key. And we have the ability to morph between different filter types. So this is a low pass, moving, morphing into a band pass, to a high pass, I'll bring that frequency down, into a notch. And then what we can do is we can automate that using an envelope, this filter envelope to the right we can control the attack, decay, sustain, and release of it. And you can control the amount that the filter envelope is going to control the filter. So and you can link this to the amp. So if we click on link there, get more of a plucky sounding effect if you want that. And we can unlink it easily just by clicking on that button there. So that's the filter window. Next, we have the envelope tab. And with the envelope tab, you have the ability to control the amplitude envelope. So let's just boost up the sustain level. Bring in the release. That's better. Okay, and you can link that to the filter if you want to. We also have this pitch envelope. So right now, the pitch envelope amount is boosted to the max amount, which is 48. So that gives us the initial punch that we have at the start of a note. Because the sustain is all the way down. So that's given us a punchier sound into the shape tab. So here we have soft shaping, hard shaping, sign shaping, and four bit. And you can boost the amount here and select between different types. So let's experiment with those. Okay, we also have FM and AM modulation. So you can choose a different waveform that you want to modulate your sound. For example, we could go with a square D and then boost the amount here. And that will introduce some new frequencies into the sound. And with this control here, we can control the pitch of that. And we have ADSR controls as well. And you can flip between FM and AM.
Moving on into the LFO tab, you can see that we have two LFOs. LFO one is pretty simple and you can assign it to the amplitude or the filter or the pan, pan or the pitch. So let's experiment with that. And then LFO2 is a little bit more complex. You get a lot more control with LFO2 because you can control jitter amount. If I just boost up the depth, you can see that there is a lot of jitter being introduced in this moving window. We can control that amount. We can also smoothen it out if we want to. And so that can help to create more of a natural feel to your music. We can also assign LFO2 to any parameter within the synth by opening up this uh, menu here. Okay, so that's the LFO tab. Next, we have the effects tab. So saturation, for example. And you can choose between different curves and boost the frequency. So you could use the LFO2 to automate the frequency of this if you wanted to, for example. Okay, so that's saturation. We have chorus. So that's a modulated delay that helps to really widen your sounds and give them a new character as well. We have auto pen. Ability to change between pump mode and chop mode. So chop sounds obviously a lot choppier, like a saw wave. And then pump sounds a lot smoother. Okay. Next we have frequency shifting. So some great effects there. We have Redux or Bit Reduction, Hard and Soft Mode. So that can be great to add in some extra artifacts to your sound and degrade it and make it a bit grittier. Reverb Amount and Time. And then we have delay. So this particular sound has quite a bit of delay on it. And we can adjust the time and you can change that to be synced or just in milliseconds. Feedback amount. Okay, so those are the effects. And then in the next section, I'm gonna cover the ARP section of these seven tabs. So I've written a chord progression, and if we change that to polyphonic mode, you'll be able to hear it. So pretty basic chord progression there. But if we change that to monophonic mode and activate arpeggiator A, just by clicking on this circle that says A there, then we can now create an arpeggiated melody. We have the ability to control the gate. Once you get to this overlap section of the gate, you can use the glide time to adjust the gliding between different notes.
we can control the distance. So I'm going to leave that at zero and we can change the style. So right now the notes are moving upwards, but I can change that to down, up, down, down, then up, up and down, down and up, convergence, divergence, con and divergence, pinky up, pinky up, down, thumb up, thumb up, down, play order, chord trigger, random, random other, random once. So there's a lot of different rhythms and melodies you can create easily. For example, let's try down up. So that's a nice simple one. And we have a second arpeggiator that we can activate just by clicking on B here. And this will act independently of A and create some crazy arpeggiated melodies by working on the chords in a different way. So let's see if we can create some madness here. So it just takes some playing around to get something that sounds great, but you can get there. Change the groove to 16. So there you go, that's a melody that sounds really unique and interesting and it's something that I couldn't really have come up with by myself. It would have taken a long, long time for me to arrive at something similar to that, but instantly we've got something that sounds really cool. So that's the ARP section. Finally, we'll take a look at the preset section. So if you click on the factory bank, you can see that we have different ARPs, bases, effects, synth keys, and pads. And we have this morph matrix here, which allows us to morph between different presets. So what you can do is select a preset such as mod base. It sounds like this. And we can assign that to position one. Next, we can select mass over volume very different sounding preset and we'll assign that to two by just clicking on the number two there. Let's choose XMFS, assign that to three. And then finally we'll choose Moist Donut and assign that to four. So now I can click in different positions. Bear in mind that these different presets have different tunings to them, but you can easily tweak those once you're happy with the sound you've got. So if I just play this melody here, and then click here, very different timbre. So I'm just listening to that and clicking in different positions to change the position of the crosshairs in the Morph Matrix and coming out with some interesting results. So overall, I love Pulsator. I highly recommend it to you. Very high quality sounds and very easy to use to get some highly original material. I love the ARP section here. I love the XMOD oscillator here and the ability to add new elements to your sounds very easily and very quickly. So thanks for watching this video. And we'll speak to you soon.